Hey everyone, Nathaniel Rumpeljantz here, and we are giving away a copy of Paper Mario, The Origami King. You just need to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon that gets you one entry, and you can enter in every single video and or live stream we do from now through the end of July, and I wish all of you luck. Hey everyone, I'm bringing you two stories in this video. We're pairing some PlayStation 5 news, or PlayStation news, I guess, and Xbox news all together. And uh, you know what? Without further delay, let's just get right into the Xbox stuff, which deals with their second next generation system. So as you can see here, I'm getting this report off of The Verge. It claims there's a leaked Microsoft document hinting at the second next gen Xbox. And we've known about the rumors of Lockhart for, for a while and that uh, the pricing for it might be half of the price of the Xbox Series X, uh, which was Project Scarlet originally. Uh, but let's just get into what is actually being reported here. Um, there was a document uh, that supposedly leaked that has uh, information coming out for the system from a dev kit for the Xbox Series X in terms of a profile that seems to be at the power of what they're targeting. And this system does seem to be targeting 1080p or 1440p gaming, which are the, still the most common resolutions over 4K, uh, especially in the PC gaming space. Uh, the leaked document mentions a Lockhart profiling mode, and sources familiar with Microsoft Xbox plans are telling The Verge that this special Lockhart mode is part of the Xbox Series X developer kit. The dev kit, codenamed Dante, allows game developers to enable a special Lockhart mode that has a profile of performance that Microsoft wants to hit with this second console. We are understanding that this includes seven and a half gigabytes of usable RAM, a slightly underclocked CPU speed, and we assume this means in comparison to the Series X, and around four teraflops of GPU performance. Now that's been rumored for a while, but now we have more of a confirmation. The Xbox Series X includes 13 and a half gigabytes of usable RAM and targets 12 teraflops of GPU performance. And obviously we know the exact clocks now of that CPU. Uh, it appears it might be the same CPU, just underclocked. Developers will be able to use this Lockhart mode to test their games against this performance profile and do validation checks. Microsoft is expected to position its Lockhart console for that 1080p, 1440p, blah, blah, blah. Take advantage of Game Pass, all of that jazz. Um, you know, there hasn't been an acknowledgement from Microsoft on that Lockhart codename. Uh, it can be found, however, in the Xbox One's current operating system, which we now believe will be the operating system brought over to Series X just with new uh, changes to it to include the new features. Um, they're saying it's going to be called the Xbox Series S um etc 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 xbox all access subscription all this jazz there's all this stuff that they're going to be doing with it obviously the game streaming is something that this system will be touted for uh especially there is an xbox one s all digital edition subscription for 19.99 a month that includes xbox game pass ultimate etc so there's a lot of things that people are expecting to make this in terms of their budget system uh and all that jazz and we'll discuss that in a moment because i also want to make sure we get into the playstation news today and the big news for PlayStation today is that Last of Us Part 2 sold through more than 4 million units in three days, which is the biggest launch for Sony ever. This is the biggest launch for the PlayStation 4 in terms of exclusives. Uh, I think the previous high was Mar uh, was the Marvel Spider-Man game at 3.3 million. Uh, you, yep, you see that here. They also got a war at 3.1. Uh, the original Last of Us was the largest launch ever on PlayStation 3, and that sold, I believe, 3.4 million. Uh, so, yeah, 4 million is record-breaking. We heard about it breaking records in the UK now we know from an official PlayStation uh, channel here that it has sold more than 4 million copies and broken obviously all of the current sales records uh, some additional info gathered is it's the best Sony launch ever in the UK and this is just in terms of physical sales not even counting digital best Sony launch ever in Spain Russia Czech Republic and Slovakia biggest launch ever in Russia for a game released on a PlayStation platform which beats up Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, the biggest launch of 2020 in Germany, most pre-ordered Sony game ever in Brazil, and The Last of Us Part II is more pre-ordered in Europe at the same point than Spider-Man. Now, obviously, this isn't going to uh, deal with much in the U.S. and Japan because clearly it wasn't necessarily breaking records in uh, two of the biggest uh, sales countries out there, but it's overperformance in a lot of other countries in combination with good performance. Uh, we know in uh, you know in Japan it debuted at like 170,000. We don't know the U.S. numbers yet. Uh, 
clearly it has sold a crap load of copies. Um, Naughty Dog also put out a tweet so to all the fans that played The Last of Us Part 2 uh, and been part of this journey and helped us reach this incredible milestone. Thank you, uh, The Last of Us Part 2, blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, Neil Drunkman uh, came out and said thank you to our fans. We couldn't do what we do without your incredible support. So uh, we'll get into more of this in a moment because uh, The Last of Us Part 2 is kind of a controversial game. Uh, but uh, let's first get back into the Xbox stuff. So obviously, uh, that's two really big news stories uh, for both of the companies competing with Nintendo. And uh, when we talk about the Xbox Lockhart stuff, I think the biggest question I have isn't so much where this console fits in the marketplace. It's clearly a budget system um, that's meant to get next-gen games that might outperform the Xbox uh, One X, although, you know, that's six teraflops of performance versus four, but there's a better CPU, SSD, all that jazz. So I I don't know. <laughs> We're not going to know until it comes out and we can actually do game comparisons. Uh, but I feel like the issue isn't so much where it fits in the marketplace, but if these systems launch concurrently, if, aka if the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S launch at the exact same time, I do wonder um, how that's going to impact the market uh, and how it's going to impact sales because um, I, I don't know how these systems can coexist in the same launch period. I would understand the Series X came first and then say in the spring the Series S came out. I feel like doing a, a delayed release like that um, opens the window up and, and gives people um, an opportunity to realize what they get with the new stuff uh, before they consider buying a Series S versus just launching it right away and people wondering, is this even better than my Xbox One X? Like, we don't know beyond the SSD. Like, is it actually better? Um, <laughs> there's no answer to that. Uh, maybe we'll have that answer next month as we expect it to be unveiled, I suppose, along with pricing and all that, along with a whole bunch of games at an Xbox uh, Series X event. But again, we don't actually know uh, and I think that's the mystery here is that, okay, now we have some specs, we have some ideas on, on what developers can expect out of this system, but now what? Um, I don't know. Developers probably know more than we do. Uh, we'll just have to wait for the event. As for The Last of Us, oh boy, The Last of Us Part 2 uh, is the most successful launch on, in Sony history. And that's great news for Sony, great news for Naughty Dog, great news for PlayStation. The big question, obviously, is, um, is this what they want to be <laughs> the best launch? Um, the reviews for Last of Us Part Two, the uh, the media reviews are huge, right? Really, really well performing, um, and there seems to be some people that legitimately love The Last of Us Part Two. But we can't ignore the controversy surrounding the game. Now, I don't want to get into too much spoilers with it, but basically, a lot of people aren't liking the story. Um, especially the beginning of the story and then a certain part of the story that forces you for quite some time, almost half the game, to play as a completely different character and try to sympathize with that character when it, it doesn't really connect the way that Last of Us did. And I think the hard part for Last of Us Part Two is just how incredible everybody seems to agree the original story was in The Last of Us. Uh, and it feels like The Last of Us Part Two kind of marginalizes a lot of that story, and uh, people are not happy with the end result. Now, that some people, there are obviously plenty of people that are also happy with it, but with the review bombing, it's clear that there's a lot of fans. I mean, there's even a petition out there demanding that they remaster the game already and, and, and redo the story. Uh, that's not going to happen, by the way. This is a brand new game highest selling game in sony history like fastest selling anyways uh there's no way in hell they're doing that but still um it's really good news for sony obviously uh they have now ended the playstation 3 generation with last of us they've ended the playstation 4 generation with last of us 2 uh if there is a last of us 3 we're not going to probably see that till the end of the playstation 5 era they seem to want to end their systems now uh with one of their best games uh, and that's incredible. We obviously know about a new potential Spider-Man game, or is it DLC? We're not 100% sure yet. It's coming with PlayStation 5, uh, likely at launch and all that. So I am i don't know. Um, Sony's kind of killing it right now, even though I know system sales are, are kind of just you know dead in the water, even with the release of Last of Us Part II. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that uh, this is a, a great way. I, well, one thing I, I got to give Sony credit for, and I, I love this um, over what Nintendo does. Nintendo, at the end of their system lives, tend to abandon the system. Um, Skyward Sword notwithstanding, I, we, there really wasn't much up until Skyward Sword, and I feel like Nintendo just sort of, when they are starting development for a new system, they just throw the old system in the trash for a couple of years and just let it skate by. Um, whereas Sony hits it hard. You know, we still have Ghost of Tsushima coming. Um, like, 
Sony hits hard at the end of a generation, which usually means the start of the next generation is a lot slower. Like the start of PlayStation 4 um, didn't really feel like it got going until about two years in. You know, we got Bloodborne, but like, it, it really took two to three years before PlayStation 4 really started catching up with Steam, and it relied a lot on old games and ports and remasters and collections um, and obviously third-party support. So Sony's strategy is almost the opposite of Nintendo. Nintendo ducks to front load their systems, Sony backloads, but Sony backloading has always seemingly led into massive success for the launch of the next platform because people are like, look what they just did for us. We can trust them to do that again on the next platform. Whereas Nintendo front loads so much that by the time we get to the next system, um, people feel like kind of um, hurt, I guess, by the end of the generation and wonder, can Nintendo really give us games, even though they consistently do? Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljans from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to enter our giveaway for the Paper Mario game. Go back to the beginning of the video if you want to know how to do that. Otherwise, I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.